What's good YouTube? It's your boy Doyle back with another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing two trade breakdowns. Um, I made 12,000 in two days off of just trading GU with supply and demand. So I'm gonna show y'all those two setups. Um, Q4 have really been like, bro, inconsistent, bro. Like next month, not gonna be a lot of trading. I may trade like twice in a week, maybe once in a week. But uh, I'm definitely about to slow down trading for the end of the year. Um, I've been getting a million questions on Instagram, bro. Like, if you've been DMing me on Instagram, I'm sorry, bro. It's just hundreds of DMs. I just can't get to all of them. I'm sorry, bro. I mainly answer all my questions in the Discord, but like Instagram, bro. Like, if I haven't DM me back, bro, don't take it personal. It's a million people trying to message me, and yeah, that's why I try to like do like Q and A's. Like, I ask Instagram like what type of videos that y'all request, and then we just go from there. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna break down these two trades, how I made 12,000 in two days. And at the end of this video, stick around to the end of this video because it's gonna be some gems at the end of this video as far as risk management. How do I trade one-to-one -one RRs and be able to cut my losses early? Um, I talk a lot about cutting my losses early in my webinars, my Discord, but I'm gonna try to give like a little brief, like little summary of how I do it in this video. Um, what else? It was something else. Oh. And why do I use fixed lot sizes instead of percentages? That's another thing I'm gonna talk about. So stick around to the end of this video, man. Like if you're in the Discord, you can just fast forward. You already know how I trade, so you can just watch the end of this video. But if you don't know how I trade, just watch the whole video, man. But let's get it. This setup happened around 10:50. Um, I was actually about to get off the charts, and then I saw it. I'm like, okay, like let's just give it a go. So um, this setup had no higher time frame confluence. Um, if you go to the one hour, go to one hour. We had this huge gap right here, but that doesn't mean it's going to fill in, fill it in that day. So this is honestly like an uptrend if I'm being completely honest. So me taking a five minute supply and we're on the uptrend on the one hour, I need to scalp this. That's my mindset when I see setups like this. We are already low. We didn't take a supply setup up high. We're taking it kind of low and we're on the uptrend on the one hour so um yeah so other than that um this had a break of structure it made a whole new low um i had my supply zone literally just like this and i was just literally just waiting for it to come back into that zone tap into my zone i actually got in aggressive on this move so i didn't get a get in aggressive on this wick on this wick right here did not fast forward i saw that rejection once I saw that third rejection, I'm like, okay, I'm getting in somewhere up in here. I got in like right here somewhere. And then I got I put my stop loss above the zone. Anytime when I get in aggressive, I put the stop loss above the zone. So um, yeah, so all I was aiming for was like a little over one or two. Cause I didn't get it, I didn't get out like right here by the way. I got out like somewhere up in here. And that was really it. Like I just caught like 20 pips off that move. And that's all I needed, bro. That's literally all I needed. Was just that little move right there. That's really all I needed. So yeah, once it tapped my TP, I was out. And the rest was history after that. And it started going up after. So that's how I know. Well, I understand my strategy and I understand later in the day, reversals is going to happen. It's not going to just keep dropping or keep going up. So I hate taking setups after 1030. Okay, now this was the first trade um, that I took on Monday. Now Tuesday, I took a loss on all USD demand. Um, I, post, I post a trade on Instagram. People will be like, oh, I don't post losers. Bro, I post my losses on Instagram, bro. Okay. So, um, yeah, it, it, you're probably not even going to be able to see it by the time I upload this. But yeah, I had, I had a loss on all USD and then this GU demand happened. Now, this GU demand was, was kind of ugly because the zone was huge. So, I had this demand zone right here. Right there. And another thing that I was noticing, this had been trending for way too long. So I'm like, I'm like, I should just take a one-to-one. -one. Like it's as simple as that. I shouldn't even try to hold for um one and two or one and three. I'm just gonna just close at one-to-one. -one. So it came back to my zone. And I got in a little bit before it broke the candle. I got in a little bit before it broke the candle, but I still I got in like right there. But I still put my stop loss underneath the zone. I mean, underneath the, the candle. Because this zone was just super huge. I'm like, bro, like, this is ridiculous. And again, I went for a little over one to one. It was like a 1.3, something like that. And then I closed. 
that was it literally that candle wicked it and that was it that's all i needed i was done for the day how many pips was that? Oh, about 25 pips um i think i closed a little bit before 25 pips i think it was like 21 or 22 pips but whatever caught 22 pips I just keep it super simple. I don't try to overcomplicate it or anything like that. Both setups had no confluence with the higher time frame, but the way I take these setups, I can grab a one to one consistently or a one to two consistently. That's all I'm looking for. It's just consistent wins. But uh, yeah, let's get into this risk management and um, why I use fixed lot sizes, et cetera, et cetera. This part of the video, if you do not have a large account, your capital, this will not apply to you. I'm gonna say it one more time. If you don't have a super large account, I'm talking about over 50,000. Over $50,000 cash in your trading account, your money, this will not apply to you, okay? So that eliminates like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, just, I'm just gonna keep it real. That eliminates a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? That's why I don't like pushing my risk management because I'm trading my capital. I don't trade with prop firms. When you trade a prop firm, I recommend percentages because the game is to make it to the next payout. It's not about having a $3,000 win, four or $5,000 win, 10K win, you know what I'm saying? Because when you see traders doing like that, doing that, most of the time, they're trading their personal funds. Let me say that again. When you see other traders that's making four or 5,000 in a day, 10,000 a day, they already have a large account. That's their capital, okay? That's not prop firm capital. It's most most of the time, not, not all the time, but most of the time is their capital. So take that with a grain of salt. That's why I push magic keys. I push magic keys because this is a good calculator for us um, risk management when it comes to prop firms. Now let's talk about it. I like fixed lot sizes because every setup that I take, the risk is different, okay? And another thing, people think that I'm always closing that one to one RR. That is not the case. That's just what I'm showing on Instagram. Does that mean that's what I'm closing with? No, you feel what I'm saying? Now, when I'm closing, if I'm closing for a one to two, one to three, most of the time I got in aggressive at my zone. What I, what I mean by getting in aggressive at my zone is I'm getting in with no confirmation. I'm just hitting buy on the demand setup or I'm hitting sell straight off the supply setup. You know what I'm saying? When I take those type of setups, I'm aiming for a one to two minimum. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe a one to three. So when people see that my losses is super small, that means I either got in aggressive and it came back down and my stop loss is underneath the demand zone and I closed it well before it hit the um, stop loss underneath the demand zone, okay? So think about it, if my, if my demand zone right here, I got in at the top of the zone, my stop loss underneath the zone, price is coming back down, I closed really right here, I just saved so much of that area, you know what I'm saying, for, for me cutting my loss early. So when I get in aggressive, I have, a, I have a better chance of cutting my loss super early rather than the, the break of the candle. Now, when it comes to the break of the candle entries, because I have two different types of entries, the break of the candle entry, I go based off of momentum, and sometimes I would just let it just hit my stop loss. But when I cut my loss early, when I enter the break of the candle, the difference from me getting out versus hitting my stop loss only be like this big. It don't even be that much. You know what I'm saying? But the point of this, this um, portion of the video is there is no secret sauce to cutting losses. You know what I'm saying? It, it comes with experience, seeing trades not work out. You know what I'm saying? Look, paying attention to momentum and following a trend. There is no secret sauce. People be thinking like, I, I have something hidden or something. Bro, I'm just cutting my loss before hitting my stop loss. That's all I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? If you if you want to watch the webinars I have in the Discord, I talk about it plenty of times, cutting losses early. What do I look for? You know what I'm saying? Are we, or is it a higher time frame, supply and demand conflict with my five minute? Like stuff like that. Like I'll talk about that in the webinars. But like on Instagram, people be thinking like, I'm like, how am I getting bigger wins with one to one risk reward, and my loss is super small. I'm just cutting the loss early. That's all that I'm doing. Now, when it comes to me getting aggressive, when I'm getting in aggressive, my loss will be super small because I have more room. Because it just depends on how big the supply and demand zone is. I have more room to make a decision whether I want to close or hold the trade. You feel what I'm saying? So um, my wins. Most of the time, when my wins are super big, I got in aggressive, straight up. I ain't gonna lie, like when I get in right before I break the candle, it usually be well over like three, four thousand dollar win, like stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's about it as far as like risk management. How do I be cutting losses early? If you want more information, just watch the uh, webinars in the Discord. I'm just gonna say that. Um, yeah, that's about it, man. People been asking me about fixed loss side. They been asking about risk management. 
Um, people been asking me, okay, how do you maintain profitability off of one-to-one -one RRs? First of all, what is your win rate? Because my, my win rate is between 70% 75%. I don't win all my trades, obviously, but I'm just saying like when I do win, I win way frequently than losing. So you got to take that into consideration. If you have a low risk reward, um, your win rate got to be high. Now, I know traders that have one to eights. They go for the one to tens. They want to one to fives minimum, but their win rate is low. But when they do win, they cover all of those losses. What do, what do you want to do? You know what I'm saying? Do you want to be that trader that takes one to 10 risk rewards, but you don't lost like the, the last three trades, but then you finally hit off the one to 10? Be that trader. Me personally, I want to win more consistently, more, more frequently. That's just me. Everybody is different. I'm not telling you what to do, what not to do. But um, I hope this clear, clear stuff up for people that's on Instagram that mentioned me a million questions about my risk management and all like, my risk management is different because I have the capital to trade with. I don't need a prop firm. People need prop firms, so you can't do this. Like, I'm not about to tell you to, to trade 33 lots like me because is they gonna let you do that? And if you lose, how much you about to lose? In percentages, that's what I'm saying. Because you have a daily limit. I can lose 6,000 a day, not saying I want to, I can lose 6000 a day and keep my account. So I feel like the end goal is to trade with your own funds. It's not to be with the prop firms. Yes, you can run up the bag of the prop firm, but who don't want to trade their own funds, withdraw when they want to, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's all I got in this video, man. Like, hope you enjoyed the trade breakdown. Um, this has been a decent week. Like I said, Q4, I'm about to slow down with the trading. Next month, I might trade once a week, twice a week, but I'm about to slow down, bro, because like it's the holidays. Next week, Thanksgiving, like, it's just time to slow down, bro. Like, it's not, it's not a lot of people in the market. Like, just know that. But um, that's all I got. Peace and love. I'm out.